guys. A new season is on the horizon and uh, I don't think there's a better time than to explain uh, some bot lane wave management for you guys. And um, I know a lot of people have talked about this in the past, um, but I still keep seeing it both in my reviews and in my games. And I mean, sometimes I do it as well, right? But I think uh, a lot of people these days, they for sure know about bot lane wave management, but they're not doing it as well as, as they can. And they're not making a habit of actually getting it into the system to always be thinking proactively uh, about their bot wave. Um, and I want to explain that in, in this video, why it's so important. I think we all kind of kind of have a hunch of why it's important, but also uh, the house, like how can you improve this and how can you make it a habit that is actually going to stick? So you're not like just you're doing it for a week and then you stop doing it and you start autopiloting again. So I want to explain that in today's video. Let's jump right into it. So why is being great at wave management going to skyrocket your climb? I'm making a pretty bold statement here. Um, but the thing is, there are so many variables in League. Uh, there are your four other teammates. There are the five enemy teammates. There are the random drakes that spawns. There are crit chances. You cannot control if you're going to crit or not on your next auto, for example. There are so many variables in League that it's basically just completely out of our control. And we want to make the ones that we can control uh, as less random as possible. And way management is the single biggest thing uh, that, that you can control every single game. Because every game is going to last for at least 15 minutes, right? And if you can improve this and be consistent at it, uh, the enemies that you're facing probably won't be as consistent and you're just going to be able to abuse this. Um, another plus, uh, a plus side of this is that if you're proactively thinking about your wave management and you're actually not just walking into the game, you're pretty much autopilot and you're just trying to get pushed in every single matchup that you're playing, um, actually being uh, being proactive and kind of mindful about your waves um, allows you to be way less autopilot. Uh, I think AD carry, uh, at least, support not as much because you kind of forced to think about the map a lot, but for AD carry for sure, you're pretty much doing the same thing uh, every single game. I think it's really easy to fall into this kind of trap uh, of being in this autopilot mode and maybe maybe a lot of people don't even realize it before they're kind of out of it and um, I think that's why as well uh, being just really great at wave management will also uh, obviously increase your knowledge about the game and it will uh, lessen your deaths you will have more farm but also uh, again it will allow you to autopilot uh, way less which obviously is kind of what we all want right we want to be able to go into a game with 110% focus on, on things that we can control and not just when I'm doing the same thing on repeat and hoping things uh, are gonna be uh, good, right? Because, let's face it as well, Autopilot I think is one of the biggest like fun killers of League. Like, I, there are so many people uh, that are just spamming games for pretty much no reason. I've been doing this as well, right? Uh, I'm not I'm not like someone special that is not doing this. And uh, I just know how much more fun it is when you're actually being able to uh, stay proactive in the game and be, be kind of in it like 100%. Uh, so I wanna, once again, uh, just kind of touch on this that being good at wave management is gonna snowball for, for the rest of the game. I, I said it right, you're gonna improve your farm, you're gonna lessen your deaths, you're gonna be able to stay in the moment more, you're gonna be able to autopilot way less, which is gonna obviously translate into the, the later stages of the game. Uh, so let's, uh, let's dive into the replay. So this is a clip from my master AD carry called Pat. Uh, I was coaching this guy a couple of days ago actually, and uh, he was kind of confused of why he was constantly like dying a lot. He was missing a lot of farm for pretty much no reason. He felt like, and uh, I'm gonna show you why and why many other AD carries are doing the same thing here. So he's playing Caitlyn Bard against Vayne Yumi. Obviously a matchup where Caitlyn has to get ahead early, right? That goes for like all the Caitlyn matchups, and uh, if Vayne gets ahead or stays even in the game, he's gonna be able to 1v9 the game and against the Aatrox of Kong and Malphite, right? Um, and how do you do this? You do this by managing your waves and having an actual thought process in, in, in doing so. And uh, I'm just gonna let the roll, uh, clip roll and uh, I'm gonna show you afterwards why, what the things that he did poorly and what the things that he did well. And I want you to kind of guess and think about what he did wrong uh, when this clip is playing so you learn as well. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
room. Headshot. So right off the bat, Caitlyn gets exactly what she wants, which is getting a heavy advantage level 1. Uh, they really, really nuke this Vayne, and they also, which is the biggest part, they deny all of these three melee experiences from Vayne and Yumi. So they're gonna be stuck at level 1 for such a long time in this lane, which is exactly what you want as Caitlyn. So this was obviously very well done. So this is where I think we're starting to see a little bit of a mistake from the Caitlyn. Um, after the level 1 that just happened, I think Caitlyn has to realize instantly that this lane is already basically over, and I just have to make sure that, for one, I don't get ganked, and two, I manage my waves in a way that I can hit the tower as much as possible. And how do we achieve that in this lane? We have to slow push. We have to build up as big of a wave as possible without letting it go in a position like where it is right now. Because when it's the lane is in a position like this, it's so hard to punish the vein whenever she goes for farm. Bard cannot really hit Qs, it's really hard for her, and also, Lilia can also, this is the only position where she can actually land and get a gank off. If the wave is in the middle position, for example, th there's no way that Lilia can gank. And if she tries to, Wukong is just gonna be able to punish it. But right now, when the wave is like this, we're seeing it right now, right? Vayne is fully back to full HP, she's kind of chilling, Bard cannot really walk up to get a stun off, Caitlyn cannot really auto him as well, and now they're just trying to push in the wave, but this is the only timer where Lilia can actually gank, and Wukong cannot be here in time to, to punish this. Obviously Lilia sees this, she skips her red buff to get this gank of happening, but just denying this uh, so early into the game for Caitlyn, forcing both of her summoners, because of the simple fact that this wave was put uh, in a bad position, um, is really what snowballs this game out of control for, for the Caitlyn. So again, right, the reason that the wave ended up in a position like this is because Caitlyn didn't really recognize that she already had the push. Uh, if Vayne tries to go for farm when she is uh, that low HP, it's that early into the lane, Caitlyn will just try to auto her, and uh, Vayne is not gonna be <laughs> be able to, to farm this, really. And um, I think what we have to learn from this is really that kind of recognizing when you have the advantage already, and you don't have to kind of overdo things. Uh, you don't have to over push, because once again, here having the wave in a position like where it is right now is probably the worst position that you can, you can have, because as I mentioned, you cannot uh, punish the enemy for trying to farm, and you also are really prone to, to, to getting ganked. And it's exactly what happened, right? I mean, if Caitlyn, if Pat recognized that he would already have push in this lane, he would just not push at all. He would hit Vayne whenever she tried to go for farm, and the way would be uh, still here in the middle. And if Lilia then tries to go for the gank regardless, which she probably won't because she <laughs> that's just basically a bit of a troll, then Wukong is also going to be able to, to be here in time. But... Once again, having the position in a wave like uh, the wave in a position like this rather uh, just really hurts uh, Caitlyn's chances uh, to to snowball the game. And this goes for Kinda, even though she has a bar right now that maybe Bard can land a Q. Let's say you have an engage champion, for example, you have a Nautilus or you have a Leona or a Mumu. There is no way that they can land an engage here, right? Because <laughs> uh, obviously uh, the tower is way too close, and if they try to go for an engage, they're probably just gonna be able to uh, to turn it around. So how do we make this a habit that sticks, and not just something that we do for a couple of games and then we kind of just forget about it? Um, it's by starting small. I mean, know this, write it down, uh, make it an actual goal uh, of yours to be able to improve on this and become good at it, because you will see easily that you're gonna be able to abuse your opponents. Start small, plan your first three waves based on your matchup, literally only this, and when you go into loading screen, you just kind of figure out a plan that you wanna how you want to do the first three waves. If you have Pryo, if you don't have Pryo, where you not want your wave to be, um, where your jungler is pathing, uh, things like this, right? Uh, this will snowball you into thinking, hey, I want to keep doing this for the next phase as well, and it's gonna just allow you to be more in the present uh, in the game. And I think also, just in general, like having a goal in solo queue and that is not based on kind of useless, like short-term LP, it's gonna allow you to focus even harder on the game itself and not just kind of Get a bit frustrated whenever you die or when you see your teammate is dying solo you just you know we've all been through this uh, you just get uh, way um, more in uh, in focus uh, rather and uh, which is obviously gonna make the game <laughs> even more fun which is kind of why we're all playing uh, at least from the start right um, also just know that if you improve this area it's gonna snowball into 
so many other areas, aspects of, of your game. It will automatically improve them. Because uh, you will have way less deaths, you will have way more farm if you manage your waves correctly. You will also gain more knowledge because you're actually actively working on something rather than just, than just playing the game. Um, which is obviously fine, right, if you just want to play for fun. But <laughs> this video is obli obviously to those who want to improve their game. And uh, having an active goal is going to allow you to, uh, to do so. So, I kind of wanted to go through as well, uh, if you don't know if you're gonna have prior or not, uh, let's just look at that really quick. So this is a template I made, uh, really basic, straightforward, uh, non-rocket science at all, uh, where if you don't know if you're gonna get priority on bot lane or not, you can kind of use this. Uh, and it's more about range and uh, kind of wave clearing abilities and engage abilities, things like this. Uh, so once again, really simple uh, kind of template that you can use. Um, to, to improve this goal, right? Uh, because if you know already the answer to the question, will I have priority in this lane going into loading screen, you can then kind of plan your first three waves a lot simpler, right? That was it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, once again, really basic, but really something that can elevate a lot uh, of, your, of, uh, of your game. And I know that if you do this consistently, even just these last couple of weeks before season 13 hits, you're gonna have an edge on so many players. So I hope you make this a goal uh, of yours. Uh, if you don't know me, uh, I'm Mtest. I'm a multi-season challenger playing AD carry. I recently swapped to support and also became a mental and bot lane coach after playing five years uh, in the ARLs. Um, I now do educational content about League and I also write a lot on Twitter about uh, different mental aspects of the game and also educational content. Um, so feel free to follow that, I will put links in the description. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys very soon again. Thank you so much for watching, have a good day.